In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, strength of all the saints, who through the cross were pleased to call the martyrs, St. Peter Baptist, Paul Miki, and companions to life, grant we pray that by their intercession we may hold with courage, even until death, to the faith that we profess. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was a formless void. There was darkness over the deep, and God's Spirit hovered over the water. God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that light was good, and God divided light from darkness. God called light day, and darkness he called night. Evening came, and morning came, the first day. God said, Let there be a vault in the waters to divide the waters in two. And so it was. God made the vault, and he divided the waters above the vault from the waters under the vault. God called the vault heaven. Evening came and morning came, the second day. God said, Let the waters under heaven come together into a single mass, and let dry land appear. And so it was. God called the dry land earth, and the mass of waters seas, and God saw that it was good. God said, Let the earth produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and fruit trees bearing fruit with their seed inside on the earth. And so it was. The earth produced vegetation, plants bearing seed in their several kinds, and trees bearing fruit with their seed inside in their several kinds. God saw that it was good. Evening came and morning came, the third day. God said, Let there be lights in the vault of heaven to divide day from night, and let them indicate festivals, days, and years. Let them be lights in the vault of heaven to shine on the earth. And so it was. God made the two great lights, the greater light to govern the day, the smaller light to govern the night, and the stars. God set them in the vault of heaven to shine on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to divide light from darkness. God saw that it was good. Evening came and morning came, the fourth day. The Word of the Lord. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord God, how great you are, clothed in majesty and glory, wrapped in light as in a robe. May the Lord rejoice in his works. You founded the earth on its base to stand firm from age to age. You wrapped it with the ocean like a cloak. The waters stood higher than the mountains. May the Lord rejoice in his works. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow in between the hills. On their banks dwell the birds of heaven. From the branches they sing their song. May the Lord rejoice in his works. How many are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches. Bless the Lord, my soul. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. 
Anyone who follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Having made the crossing, Jesus and his disciples came to land at Gennesaret and tied up. No sooner had they stepped out of the boat than people recognized him and started hurrying all through the countryside and brought the sick on stretchers to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, to village or town or farm, they laid down the sick in the open spaces, begging him to let them touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all those who touched him were cured. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, do you believe that God will restore all things to the original goodness and holiness? And sometimes we look at life, we find it very hard to believe that things can ever be restored. And perhaps sometimes we are wondering, maybe we want it to be restored to the place or the way that we want it, and sometimes to the original way that we saw it or had it or experienced it. So there's a bit of a nostalgia. But the resurrection that Jesus comes to bring is really a new life, not just a resuscitation to his old life, but it's a new life. And I think it invites us to see how God sometimes brings us from the good to the better. That sometimes through our own difficulties and trials, we are truly emerge wiser and stronger and holier and that we grow closer and closer to the Lord. And that's fundamentally, we have to believe who our God is. From our first reading, we go back to the start of Genesis. And here we come to set the stage for the entire Bible. We go into Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, that God created. And as God created, we see that there's a first day, the second day, the third day. There is order, there is harmony. And whenever He had created, He saw that it was good. Today we stop at the fourth day, but when you see that the sixth day of the humankind was created, and He saw everything that He had made, it was not just good, it was very good. Because there's original goodness in creation which includes you and I. Yes, there is sin, there is brokenness, there's imperfection and weakness. And that's why we, in a way, cause pain, suffering and even death to others. And so today on this feast of Peter Baptist, Paul Mickey and companions, the Japanese martyrs who were, um, in a way, crucified uh, in Nagasaki, and they were pierced by spears traversely. Um, Peter Baptist was a Franciscan um, missionary. Uh, he's not specifically named usually because they pick a Japanese native, which is Paul Mickey, and he was a Jesuit. Uh, and the 23 Franciscans and three Jesuits that were martyred together, which is why we Franciscans would like to honor their memory and we include Peter Baptist's name. Um, but among the Franciscans, there were even children. I think if I'm not mistaken, they were as young as 10 years old. So they were catechists. A lot of lay people were martyred on, uh, on this day. Um, and they stood up for their faith, not renouncing at all um, their salvation. And this is the faith and the hope and the trust that they had, that even though they were suffering and they would be eventually martyred, there is goodness in this, that somehow this returns them into the original goodness. And we know that the original goodness is really that time and that embrace of God, that where we belong. And for these martyrs, especially led by Peter Baptist, he and the rest were condemned um, in cold winter of Japan. And to shame them, they even had part of their years cut off. In cages, they were paraded down the streets of several towns of Japan from Miyako, which, was mod which is modern-day Kyoto, 
down uh, towards Nagasaki. And the day before they arrived in Nagasaki, they learned that they will be um, martyred the next day. And instead of giving in to fear or despair or anxiety, they actually gathered their hearts together and they sing hymns to God and gave praise to God that they had this privilege to be martyred. I always admire this group of martyrs because I don't know how I would be if I were in the same state. But I think that's where the faith is to know that true life comes from God. And all we're called to do in this earthly life is to prepare ourselves for that true life, where we go to the original goodness and holiness that Genesis speaks about, where there is order, there is harmony, there is the shalom peace, which is the holistic peace, not just the peace of the lack of tension, but it's a true peace that we long for. And so my dear friends, on this day of the Feast of the Japanese Martyrs, let us just allow ourselves to look at our own life and sometimes our difficulties and sufferings in our own lives, but to also look beyond where we're ultimately heading. And do we believe that that original goodness and holiness is still within us, that's spurring us on towards the return back to the embrace of God, our eternal home. And so, where we're lacking in our faith, let us pray that the martyrs, these Japanese martyrs, who intercede for us, and we pray for that grace of the ability to consecrate and consecrate ourselves totally to the Lord and to give over to Him and allow Him to take care of us on this spiritual journey. And now we pray in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that, drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labour in the church for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.